Welcome back to Tef Travails everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Myra Escape electric shower and find out why it isn't working. Okay, so as you can see, the fundamental problem is that you turn it on, the light comes on, uh, the low uh, flow warning light comes on, but no water comes out of the shower head. Uh, so let's turn it off, uh, isolate the power supply, and open up the casing. So uh, there's two screws on top and one underneath. Let's uh, finish off removing the one from the bottom and take the front cover off. Now, the first thing I'm gonna look at is the uh, filter on the supply side. Um, so we'll do that first. You take off the front cover. You also need to remove this thing here, which is called the service tunnel. Um, and it covers up the uh, main water inlet. There's no further fixings holding us on. So you just wiggle it and pull it out and then that gives you access to the water supply uh, from the mains uh, and up into the filter, which is this part here. Um, what we're gonna do is remove that black nut on top there, uh, which gives us access to the filter. Uh, so I'm just gonna go and get some spanners, turn off the water and we'll tackle that. Okay, so using a couple of spanners, one on the uh, bottom to stop it turning around and one on the top, and I've just got a uh, rag there to catch any water that falls out. We will loosen off uh, the uh, large plastic nut, so be careful with it. Uh, you can hear a little bit of water uh, hissing there. Uh, loosen off the large plastic nut that contains. And, uh, make sure your spanner doesn't fall off and crack the tiles and just you can take it out with your thumb and forefinger and hopefully in here i'm hoping to see uh, that this is absolutely gopping and blocked because if that is blocked then that's a relatively simple fix okay that looks good that is very dirty indeed you see there's lots of particles of stuff on there hopefully get that to focus uh come on uh yeah you can hopefully see that that is just covered come on focus covered in uh, in muck uh, all the way around and that's probably stuff that's come out of the pipes because uh, this filters the mains water going into the device uh, so i'll dig that out and uh, show you what comes out of it um but yeah even looking at that end you can see it's full of debris um so we will uh, dig it out that way i don't i don't want to shove it too too much uh, because I don't want to pierce this thing. I suppose you can get new ones, um, but why spend money these days if you don't need to? Even just tapping it brings out a huge amount of shite. You know, this is what's coming through the through the taps. It does make you wonder. Um, you know, but this I suppose this is a hard water area. Um, but even just tapping it like that gets out loads and loads of stuff. But if you look there, yeah, there's still loads of shite in it. So there it is. Huge lump of it come out there. Christ knows what that is. That is disgusting, frankly. Um, considering you put this in your mouth and in your body. Uh, but that's all clear now. Um, so I will uh, rinse that off. Um, and then, um, because this could be lime scale as well, I'm going to give it a spray with this product here um, and just let it sit for a moment and, uh, and see what we get out at the end of it. Okay, so that was the... Uh, a grand total of uh, the muck that came out of it. As you can see, it's um, utterly, utterly disgusting. Um, and uh, no wonder there was no water getting through. Um, so I've just rinsed off uh, this in uh, tap water. Um, bear in mind, um, that was more difficult than I suspected because I had turned off the water at the mains. So if you're gonna do this, have a bucket of water already drawn. Um, and all I'm gonna do now is just um, a generic lime scale product. Um, give that a little spray 
uh, spray it inside. And again, you're gonna want some water to wash your hands now. And I'm just gonna leave that for a little while. Um, it says here, uh, rinse within five minutes. So I'll, I'll leave it a, a few minutes and then um, rinse it off and then we can reinstall it. Okay, so let's uh, put it back together now. I've got the uh, now cleaned filter there. Uh, no muck in it at all now. Uh, stick it back in, tighten it up, and then uh, I will nip. Excuse my hand. I will nip that up with the spanners, um, and then we can simply put the uh, service tunnel and the cover back on. Okay, so that's the uh, shower all put back together. The mains water has been turned back on. Let's uh, switch the electricity back on and go for the first attempt at starting. Now, I promise I haven't tried this already. You can see the shower head is dry, so if this is a disaster, it will be filmed. Let's go. Mm-hmm, and nothing's happening. That's bad news. Okay, so it's a couple of days later, um, and I have gone down the route of uh, purchasing a new part for the shower. I phone up Mira and uh, they have a reputation of having a decent after sale service. Um, unfortunately, this is not under warranty, as I found out it was built in 2007. Um, so they don't uh, have a warranty for 13 years. Uh, but they were able to point me in the direction of this part, which is uh, the uh, inlet valve assembly. It comes with the main switch and the valve solenoid as well as the valve itself. Part number is 1563.540. Uh, this, uh, they, they would have sold it to me themselves, but they were gracious enough to admit that it was probably cheaper elsewhere. Um, so I got this from Amazon, believe it or not. It's a genuine part. It came in at 49.99, um, and I paid the next day delivery. Uh, so that is quite expensive, but bear in mind that a new one of these is over 400 quid. Um, so let's see what we get in the box. So a load of O-rings and other stuff and then this is the part itself now it's uh, not the same color as what's on there already but uh, it does say it's a genuine part uh, so that's what you get uh, you got the switch there you got the solenoid um, which you can buy separately actually uh, and then you got the valve um, with one inlet there two outlets let's just offer that up on the shower to see that it's um, at least visually similar uh, mm -hmm. it's not entirely the same it's not the same at all because there's no light on there. Well, maybe we put, you know, maybe we transfer that light across. Yeah, so that the, the, the white on that piece of white plastic, and also there's, I guess that's the, the thing that's connected that belt. I guess you uh, put that on top afterwards. That's what that screw hole would be for. Um, so what have we got in the in the bag? Yeah, there you go. So that's what the, uh, the belt goes on to. And then that plastic bit behind it, it is what goes on there. And then um, I'd imagine that you put the you put the light on top of it. Otherwise you've got two uh, physical actuating arms up there. Yep. Um, one inlet and two outlets. Okay, it's gotta be worth a go. Okay, so I'm now going to try and take off this uh, valve and solenoid unit combined, which is uh, all of this part here. Um, I've turned off the power, turned off the water, loosened off uh, this fitting here, and now we've got to use a T15 Torx bit to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight of these Torx screws. And then hopefully the entire assembly should pull forward and we'll be able to take it off the uh, rest of the shower. One thing I am going to do is on this belt here. I'm just going to mark across uh, So we can see where the belt should be put back on 
just in case we do have to remove that, which yeah, we probably will. So in addition to those Torx screws, I removed uh, the one holding this whole assembly here on this sprocket um, because I, it looked like I wouldn't be able to remove the belt over the top of it. So remove that, just drop it down there, and then um, you can wiggle this entire assembly free. Um, you need to remove it from these two fittings here onto the tank, so you, you wiggle it and move it to the left. And also those two actuate, actuating arms at the top will drop down. Now. Bear in mind that uh, the hot water tank there is full of water, as is the valve itself. So when you move it out, um, you will flood the place, which is why it is covered in water, um, including the electrics down there, which is uh, not ideal, but we are replacing it anyway. Uh, so make sure you've got something there or you will end up like I have flooding the workspace. Good. So once you've got the valve assembly off, you can then take off uh, that light there. Uh, with that little white tab, you just uh, pop that up with the screwdriver and then uh, you can push it backwards and out. Um, also, just uh, take a note of where the wiring goes and clips into what, because you will be putting that back on. Uh, so this little clip here is um, as much for my benefit um, as for that of the video. Okay, just to avoid the possibility of getting any of uh, these connections wrong, I am uh, simply gonna remove one and place it into uh, the, the new one with it sat next to it. Uh, some of these are quite tight, so you need to wiggle them a bit. So that one on the bottom there. This one with the grey and the blue. On the other switch terminal. And I will put these in properly in a moment. And then uh, this one with the blue onto the terminal closest to me uh, and this one which is a bit harder to get out uh, on the one furthest away to me so brown at the rear behave yourselves i have to get a pair of pliers okay i've connected up the valve i've just put it up there to uh, keep it out of the way while i show you this um, just make sure you've got the uh, three relevant o-rings back in place you've got one here on the inlet uh, you've got this uh, funny shaped one here um, over the entrance to the heating tank and you've got a uh, circular one down there uh, make sure those are all clean uh, replaced if necessary and in place correctly before you put the valve back on okay so this part of the assembly is slightly tricky but i think i've got it now um, just under my finger there you can see a pin uh, that go that black pin goes into the white hole on the valve uh, these two l-shaped actuating arms go underneath the micro switch bits um, so that when uh, when the valve operates you should be able to hear this like that and then underneath uh, you can see those two uh, round holes in the white bit with black pins in it that's another connection there so you've got the two white pins underneath you've got the actuating arms underneath the micro switch arms and then you've got the black pin on top all of those need to align and then the next alignment when you bring it back down is uh, on the right hand side of the valve where it makes contact with the two uh, ports on the heating element. I'm going to do this side first and then move on to the inlet because you've got quite a bit of flexibility there, certainly on this installation. Just make sure you've got the uh, blue and brown cables nicely tucked in and also that they're clear at the bottom there. Okay, so it's pretty much in place. Uh, it was quite a fiddle to get these two to line up here, uh, but eventually you can sort of feel the uh, O-rings rolling um, over the ridge where they need to be. You can see uh, these three holes are not fully lined up yet. Uh, they will be when I put a bit of pressure uh, from this side onto the valve. Uh, and then uh, you can see that there has just popped out a bit. Again, when I line it all up and get some screws in place, they, those should all tighten up and snug down nicely. Okay, slight problem with uh, what I just did. Uh, I have got all of the screws in place now and uh, tighten them down, but I've realized that uh, you can't get this in place um, until, well, un unless um, the, this whole assembly is away from the, from the uh, back plate. So it's gonna have to come off again move it forward, get uh, this, get that connected so that, I don't know if you can see there, there is a, a small gap 
um, and that gap is for uh, this um, th this metal part here to go in as well. Uh, so it's got to come forward again. Right, that's quite fiddly actually. Um, this joint here um, was difficult to get in because uh, once uh, once the valve hit the O-ring, it, it kind of rolled backwards and forwards. Um, so I am not a hundred percent certain on this joint, um, but I hope that when I uh, fit this piece over it here. Um, and snug everything down that will tighten up and be watertight. Um, I will have to turn the water back on with extreme caution. Okay, the water is back on. Uh, I did have to tighten up this joint here uh, quite a few times uh, as someone else was gingerly opening the mains tap outside. Um, but this is the one I was expecting to leak, it hasn't. Uh, so I suspect I'm gonna have to take that off again and put some uh, PTFE tape on it But let's see if this works um, So I'm gonna very gingerly press this because the casing is uh, obviously still open power is on. Let's see what happens Okay, that looks pretty promising. Um, I can already feel the hands that are getting hot so we're generating hot water. Uh, we haven't got the low pressure warning light. Um, and yeah, but that feels quite hot actually. Um, are there any leaks internally? Uh, I'm looking, I can't see any from those joints there. Uh, that appears to be beading. Um, and yeah, uh, over time that could form a nice little Chinese joint and we won't have to do anything about it. Uh, but I think the right thing to do is uh, turn the water off, take that off again and put some thread tape on there. Uh, just so, yeah, it's leaking, so it slows up. But the other joints that I was concerned about seem to be watertight. So, uh, looks like for 49.99 we've fixed the problem.